Welcome to the presentation to meet the experts titled Chemotherapy in the Older Adult with our expert Cassandra Sandy Vons, DMP for the Geriatric Oncology Clinic at Moffitt. Meet the expert is brought to you by Moffitt Cancer Center's Patient Library and Welcome Center. Please visit moffitt.org slash meet the expert to see our upcoming sessions. The content in this presentation is not intended to be medical advice, and the viewers should consult their physician should they have any medical questions. Viewers should not rely on information contained in this presentation for immediate or urgent medical needs. If you think you might have a medical emergency, call your physician, go to the nearest emergency department, or call 911 immediately. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking care because you watched this presentation. Now, please welcome our expert, Sandy. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sandy Von Ness, and I am certified in geriatrics and also oncology, and I wanted to provide an overview of chemotherapy in the older adult. When we're talking about chemotherapy, um, we have had extensive evolution in the last several years. Um, the term that we refer to now is anti-neoplastic therapy. Um, that becomes the umbrella term for any type of treatment that will work against the development or the growth of cancer. Some types of this therapy includes the traditional chemotherapy. It can also include targeted therapy, hormones, immune therapy, and antibiotics. Um, I'd like to provide a little bit of information around some of our newer therapies. Um, these have evolved in the last five years and change um, as the months go by. When we talk about targeted therapy, these treatments um, have come to us as a result of our extensive genetic um, laboratory results that we are able to obtain um, from your blood or from the tissue of your cancer cell itself. Um, as we analyze these components um, that your provider has ordered, we can see specific proteins on these cancer cells. As a result of that, um, specific therapies have been developed to target those specific proteins. When we're talking about immunotherapy, it's very familiar to us now as we have been living the last two years through a pandemic, um, but our research at Moffitt around immunotherapy was the foundation of our vaccines that were developed. This is a treatment that uses your own body's natural defenses to fight cancer. One of the things that concerns us about immunotherapies is you are often vulnerable for infection when you're using these medications. Um, this is the, an important part of treatment for several types of our cancers now. Um, it has been used in um, rheumatoid arthritis, um, in colon, um, colitis and also um, um, psoriasis. So immune therapy has been around um, for a long time. It can be intravenous or it could be in a pill form. When we're talking about chemotherapy as part of your treatment plan, you may have heard several terms during your appointments with your providers at Moffitt. This is to give you some definitions and how chemotherapy can be used to treat your cancer. When we have mentioned induction chemotherapy, you may have heard it as a result of being a blood and marrow transplant patient, or maybe as a hospital patient um, under tr undergoing treatment for leukemias. These specific 
medications shrink the cancer cells, um, primarily before radiation therapy begins. The next term is adjuvant chemotherapy. Adjuvant is given after other treatments to shrink the remaining cancer cells. For instance, um, if you have um, breast surgery or if you have um, surgery for um, an abdominal cancer, um, the first intervention is the surgery itself. The adjuvant chemotherapy is the treatment that you would receive after um, you have had the surgery. When we um, hear the term consolidation chemotherapy, this is um, drugs that are used after um, induction chemotherapy to kill the remaining cancer cells. Um, primarily, this is in the blood and marrow transplant. Um, this can be inpatient or um, now you might find many of these treatments in an outpatient basis at our treatment centers. Neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Neo is before. So this is the chemotherapy that is used to reduce the cancer size before you undergo surgery um, to remove part of that tumor. So neoadjuvant is before surgery. Combination therapy. Um, we've learned this the hard way, unfortunately, over years of um, treating patients with cancer, that um, instead of using one medication like we may have used in the past and maximize that dose um, in which the patient experiences um, many more side effects um, with a medication that is maximized at its dose, we can use lower doses um, in combination as treatments um, with the primary therapy. Um, for instance, in multiple myeloma um, patients, we frequently use multiple um, medications to, um, to induce um, um, results in that patient. Now, maintenance therapy. Um, in this case, these are medications that are given after other therapies. We want to prevent the cancer relapse um, or to slow the growth, growth of an advanced cancer. So maintenance therapy is after that initial treatment. Um, palliative therapy. When we hear the term palliative care, um, therapy, um, we think that um, that may be associated with hospice or end of life, but that is not the case at all. Um, palliative is um, when there is not necessarily um, a curative treatment, um, but palliative treatment extends life and increases wellness. Um, this is something that um, does not necessarily mean that you are not going to continue treatment with palliative care. Okay, how do we make that decision in the older adult? Um, if you are 30 years old, um, it's very easy. We can go to our National um, Comprehensive Cancer Network guidelines that are developed and we can choose treatments um, from those guidelines. Um, when you are older, um, we need to be much more specific and personalized with our treatment. Um, for instance, when we're beginning um, the cancer diagnosis, um, elements that your provider um, will determine is the type of cancer. Um, if it is a solid tumor, um, what is its size? Where is it located? Has it spread outside of the organ itself? Um, if your colon cancer um, has spread beyond the colon, the large intestine itself, and spread to the lymph nodes or the omentum around the colon, um, then that determines the stage of the cancer. 
Now, when we look at age, um, we do not necessarily make treatments based on chronological age. Um, we look at your general health. What is your body weight? That's important to the pharmacist when we're developing um, the correct dosage for your weight. How well are you able to cope with the certain side effects? Um, if you suffer from um, diabetes and we are using medications um, such as steroids, um, that can worsen your diabetes. Um, some chemotherapies can increase your blood pressure. Um, so we are going to look at um, other medical conditions that you may have when we make decisions about your treatment. Have you had previous cancer treatments before? Um, this is important um, in primarily in the, the case we think of um, breast cancer when you have a lifetime dosage of the medications um, that you may have given. And we want to know, have you received that? Um, that works similar with radiation. Um, how much radiation have you had over the course of your cancer treatments? Now, the geriatric assessment um, is a very important tool. And as I mentioned um, about your general health and medical conditions, um, this helps us determine um, if you're able to respond well to the full dosage that is recommended, or should we make um, modifications in that dose? Um, how well do you manage your activities of daily living? How active are you physically? Um, do you have um, a caregiver that would be able to assist you? What is your nutritional status? Have you lost weight prior to your cancer diagnosis? All of these elements go into um, completing a comprehensive geriatric assessment. And what matters most to you? You are at the center of our cancer treatment team. Um, we want to know what's important to you. This will help us um, discuss your treatment plan. Um, we may also discuss goals of care. Um, when your cancer may not um, have a curative option, um, in your plan, we want to know what's the most important thing in your life. Um, letting your healthcare team understand you as a person will help us um, make these decisions um, with, a, with a shared um, heart for your treatment. Who are the most important people in your life? Do they live close by? Um, what do you view as essential part of your quality of life and health and well-being? Um, one, one instance I'd like to share with you is chemotherapies can have um, side effects that may last through past the cancer treatment and throughout your life. For instance, peripheral neuropathy. If a very important part of your life is sewing, if a very important part of your life is um, running, um, where neuropathy can impact that joy in your life, um, those decisions around the side effect profile would like, would, we would like to choose so you can maintain your quality of life. If something were to happen to you during your treatment, if your cancer progresses and you're not able to make your healthcare decisions on your own, who are you going to turn to to help you with those decisions? Um, who is going to be involved in those discussions um, about your treatment plan? If you have not had an opportunity to complete an advanced directive, in all of your clinics, we have a member of the social work team 
or the chaplaincy department that would be happy to provide you with that information. Um, it's also important that you receive your cancer information from a trusted source. Um, cancer.net um, is trusted and ASCO is our clinical oncology um, team of providers. Um, we look to ASCO to provide us with recommended recommendations about best cancer treatment. Um, they also provide you with some information about navigating your cancer care and what it means to be an older adult with cancer and questions that you need to um, present um, when you're um, visiting your provider. Um, I hope this information has been helpful um, to you and at least begin you asking um, questions during your visit, especially when you hear terms that you're not familiar with. Ask for a definition. Um, what does that mean to me? Thank you very much for your time.